This is Friday, June 15, 2012. We are in Natick, Massachusetts, and this tape is part of the Morris Institute Library's Continuing Veterans Oral History Project. My name is Maureen Sullivan, and our cameraman is Dan McDermott of Natick Pegasus. We are very privileged to have with us today Effie Erickson Hall. Well, welcome, Effie. Thank you. Okay. May I ask when and where you were born? I was born in Natick, Mass. Mm -hmm. on December 10th, 1920. Where do you currently live? In Nashua, New Hampshire. Your marital status? I'm a widow. I understand you have three sons. Yes. And what did your sons do? Well, or they're doing. <laughs> they're, well, my sons all are employed, but I wanted to tell you that uh, the two of the Vietnam veterans, mm -hmm. my oldest was a sergeant, in the engineers in mm -hmm. Vietnam. My son Stanley was, uh, is a retired captain in the Air Force, mm -hmm. and he was awarded the Air Medal. Mm -hmm. And then Roland was too young. And you have grandchildren? Yes, I have a granddaughter and two grandsons. And you also have step-grand? I, I have two step-grandsons. And you and have? have five step great-grandchildren. Mm -hmm. Now you grew up in East Natick. East Natick. And Moss's Pond Grove. It, mm -hmm. it was a little quiet community. Mm -hmm. A wonderful place to grow up in. Uh, tell us a little more about what East Natick was like when you were growing up. Well, when I refer to East Natick, you know, we did, uh, after I was old enough to go to school, we walked to to the school, mm -hmm. and of course we walked the back roads and through the woods so that it was, uh, I suppose, shorter than going to the streets, but in those mm -hmm. days you could walk anywhere. <laughs> now, uh, where did you go to elementary school? The East Snake School is on the other, opposite side of Route 9. And of course Route 9 back then was Well, it was not, no trouble, no <laughs> trouble. We just walked to school. We didn't have any trouble at all. That was one of the newer schools back then, Yes, it, it was. Mm -hmm. It was pr I don't know how new because I don't know the exact <laughs> time it was built, but it was a new school for East Natick. And you went to Coolidge Junior High School. Big pardon? Did you go to Coolidge Junior yes. High School? Yes. But of course, then, then we got to know that, that there was a Natick more than East Natick because mm -hmm. we got to ride on the bus. Okay. And, and then when I went to the high school. Mm -hmm. But high school was uh, a little disjointed because it was double sessions. And of course, it allowed no time for extracurricular activities. We had to take the bus home. Mm -hmm. And how'd you like going to the other side of town, basically? <laughs> it was fine. Uh -huh. It was fine. Any distinct memories of that? Not uh, town. I, I don't remember going to uh, Natick very often. I can remember going once on the, on the trolley. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, I don't think we came to Natick uh, more than a couple of times, and that was, I think, even when I was in grammar school. Mm -hmm. So now you're, you're class of 1938. Eight. Mm -hmm. And what did your father do for a living? My father had his own business, painting business. And he was in Wellesley. Well, he, he, we lived in East Natick uh -huh. in the Moss's Pond Grove, but um, his business was all in Wellesley. Mm -hmm. And in the later years, you just showed me, he was a member of the Wellesley Fire Department? Yes, the Volunteer Fire Department. Mm -hmm. Can you show me which, uh, which one was he? Uh, he is right here. And then, of course, he did mm -hmm. volunteer or uh, enlist in the, the Coast Guard mm -hmm. at 51 years old. <laughs> We'll get to the World War II experiences in a minute. Uh, one of the reasons that Effie Hall is here is she was first cousin to the Lilges. Yes, definitely. And Grew up next door to them, all five of them. All five of them. And four of them, of course, served in World War II. Yes, uh, the youngest served in Korea. Mm -hmm. And they were all Marines. And they were all Marines. And two of them, unfortunately, were killed in action, yes. and we'll get to that. What was it like growing up next to the Wilges? Well, you know, it was a time when all children 
I, I was spoiled because I was an only child. But, mm -hmm. but uh, I'm, the boys had their chores and their work. So we did have our fun in the evening because mm -hmm. everything was let loose then and we played Relievo and, mm -hmm. and had all those good times. What exactly is Relievo? Well, one person uh, hides in a circle and uh, everybody disperses and then they're supposed to try to So it's like hide and seek. And then everybody else, it's similar, uh -huh. and then everybody tries to get back before they get caught. Oh, <laughs> yeah. I think we played a similar game called flashlight tag. <laughs> well, uh, there was another game, and, and uh, now that I've had this thoughts in my mind, I, I couldn't come up with mm -hmm. what it was. That's all right. So back in 1938, what did you do after graduation? Uh, I went to Burdette mm -hmm. and uh, rode the bus uh, on Route 9, you know, the Boston Worcester bus to, to Boston. Mm -hmm. um, and then after that, I worked at um, in Wellesley, mm -hmm. and it was all secretarial or that type of work. So Burdette was a secretarial school. Yes. Yes. Okay. Any specialty in there? Uh, no. No. Just no. Just mm -hmm. plain being trying to do little book, little bookkeeping, a little mm -hmm. uh, shorthand. Okay. And now after. Uh, during the time that you, after you graduated, you were a secretary, uh, were you aware of things that were happening in Europe and Asia at this time? Yes, we did read about them, but uh, it was one of those things you're wrapped up in yourself and you, mm -hmm. you, know, you know what's happening, but of course it doesn't come close to home. Mm. So that I don't remember any mm -hmm. particular difficulties with that thought. When uh, Germany invaded Poland in 1939, was that kind of like an uh-oh moment? Yes, because then we n know that something really is happening. Mm -hmm. But Let's skip ahead a little bit now to uh, the attack on Pearl Harbor, December 7th, 1941. Do you remember what you were doing? Uh, that's the one thing I had thought about, one of the questions I read about, but mm -hmm. uh, I was working uh, at a brokerage house in Boston by mm -hmm. that time, and uh, I know that we were all aware of it, but, uh, and horrified, mm -hmm. but you also didn't have anybody right there, so that even though you knew it and you're f afraid and, and sorry about what happened, mm -hmm. it always hits more home when you have known somebody right there. Mm -hmm. So when did your father enter the Coast Guard? I can't tell you. All right. Uh, how about when your cousins entered the military? Well, Ralph, of course, was in, in the Marines long before World mm -hmm. War II. Yeah. And uh, George was in the National Guards before he became a be before he became a Marine. Mm -hmm. And when you ask me for dates, I might have them written down. Right. But That's right. And there was also Werner? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But there was Edwin in also. Edwin. Okay. But there was Edwin mm -hmm. next. And, uh -huh. and, um, and then Werner. And mm -hmm. of course, we called Werner Beb because he was the last of the four boys and he was supposed to be the baby of the family. So he mm -hmm. was the baby of the family. But until 13 years later, my aunt had. Robert. Robert just died uh -huh. this past December. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Mm. Tell us what life was like. Uh, were you still living in East Natick at the time? Yes. Okay. So tell us a little bit about what was happening on the home front. Well, we, we were all in, involved with, uh, with all this scrap deal. Mm -hmm. My mother always saved the, the uh, fat in cans and we would turn it into the, to the meat counters for points mm -hmm. towards the meat yeah. because it was, we all had rationing mm -hmm. with their coupons. Yeah. And um, she was very good about saving rags. Mm -hmm. And then we had the paper drives through the church. Mm -hmm. Speaking of which, you showed me this photo. 
and tell us a little bit about that uh, church drive in 1941. Yeah, that was uh, a church drive with, with uh, George's, uh, my husband's mm -hmm. father's truck. And then we had his youngest brother, Walter, helping. Uh -huh. And then I was in the middle because I always had to be there. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, that was a friend, Sky Swenson, mm -hmm. and he was all Natick guides. Mm -hmm. All East Natick or just Natick guides? No, no, they're all Natick. <laughs> all right. How about uh, recreation? Did you go to the movies? Well, I didn't go to the movies because uh, when all this war business was going on, especially with my cousins, uh, mm -hmm. I couldn't stand the newsreels uh. with, with the war. So I, I didn't go to the movies. How did you follow um, the progress of the war? Did you read newspapers? Did, newspapers. The, newspapers. And then, of course, everybody's mm -hmm. talking about it. Mm -hmm. How about the radio? I don't remember reading, uh, using the radio that really? much. Okay. So, and of as, course, being out mm -hmm. in business and being with people, you know, what's you always talk about what was going on, and uh -huh. of course, the the latest disaster and the latest mm -hmm. battle. Mm -hmm. Tell us about the time of when, I think it was George and Ralph, Ralph. lost their lives. Yeah. Uh, when I found out about Ralph, my husband and I were coming back from my honeymoon in, in New Hampshire, and we mm -hmm. stopped in Manchester to see Edwin, you know, the brother Edwin, mm -hmm. and that's when I learned about Ralph. And when, when I arrived home, uh, and it was a very short number of days that I was with my aunt going to Pennsylvania mm -hmm. to see Ralph's wife and his newly born mm -hmm. little boy, who did turn out to be a United States Marine in Vietnam. Wow. So, and R Ralph was killed in action in the Pacific Theater. Yes. Yes. And how about George? And George was, uh, you know, I, I, I can't remember. Mm -hmm. That's one thing that's blanked out. He, he was, I won't say he wasn't my favorite, but mm -hmm. um, he was the one I think uh, my mother and father uh, took two more. Mm -hmm. um, and he was the only one allowed to babysit me. <laughs> and uh, he would, at times, he's, he had gone away. We had tented at Newfound Lake in New Hampshire mm -hmm. every year. And uh, one year he, he joined us. He also helped my father in his business uh -huh. painting, but his father was also a, a, a painter, so I'm sure he helped his father too. Mm -hmm. well, I know just inside the little school, which was initially named for the two the brothers. The two boys, yes. And was rededicated yeah. on summer 2011 for all four brothers. Yes. There is a very nice little display they have of the four brothers in their uniform, yes. the four brothers when they were children, and a copy of the citation that was given to George and uh, what he did to earn the Navy Cross. Yeah, well that, the, that picture of those three boys, the mm -hmm. original picture, mm -hmm. I took that. No fooling. <laughs> hmm. So tell us a little more about you. You said, you mentioned that you had been married. Yes. And who did you marry? I married George Hall from Natick. Okay. And the Halls were also the, sent several. The Halls were all in the service. Mm -hmm. um, Henry was in the Army and he was in the South Pacific. And Edwin was in the Marines and he was in the South Pacific. And Walter, the youngest, who has also done one of these surveys, mm -hmm. um, he was in the Army in the uh, great push they had there uh -huh. in, in, in uh, Germany. and He missed out on the Pacific then. Yes. <laughs> and what did your husband do? Well, my husband um, originally worked at Harvard mm -hmm. with the sonar and radiation, and he did a lot of the surveying, a lot of the testing on the Charles River. Uh -huh. And then the uh, draft board wanted him, mm -hmm. and they shifted him to MIT mm -hmm. to see if he could still get a little higher 
but they, they still took him in the army. Mm -hmm. So he was in the army a year until the, the Department of Defense had him discharged from the army. So then he was a civilian employee at Los Alamos. And uh, when did you and uh, your husband get married? In 44. In 44. And this is actually a photo of you. Uh, yes, at, in Natick. Uh-huh. And that's, that's you on the left? Uh, no, on the left is, is my uh, Dorothy Danforth Hall, uh -huh. Henry's widow, George's brother's wife. Uh -huh. um, she was my maid of honor. Okay, and the gentleman? And, uh, and my, hus my father, uh, Swen Erickson, mm -hmm. and I'm back to. Ah. But I brought it because you could see a picture of my father in his uniform. Mm -hmm. And he was in the Coast Guard Auxiliary? At Wellfleet. He was stationed Wellfleet. in Wellfleet. Mm -hmm. And now uh, you were telling me before the interview he liked it. Oh, yes. Uh -huh. Now, you were mentioning your husband. He's now in Los Alamos. Yes. Atomic bomb land. <laughs> <laughs> well, he, uh, he originally had... In, in addition to working at Harvard, he was at a small lab in Belmont, mm -hmm. Lab Associates, and they were building Don Leitz's seismograph. Uh -huh. So while he was at Los Alamos, they wanted that seismograph finished so that he was sent back to Massachusetts to help finish that, and then he was brought it to Los Alamos. Uh -huh. and, and my husband always kind of chuckled because that box had a seat of its own in the airplane and everybody else wanted the seat, and they couldn't understand why. But uh, my son, my husband used that uh, seismograph to measure the tremors in the earth when they de detonated the first one at White Sands. Wow. And you actually lived for a little while yes. down in El uh, Los Alamos. That, one of those questions was about my experience, and that was my experience going to uh, New Mexico. Mm -hmm. I had never been on the plane before, and I got on the plane, and uh, I was bumped in Chicago, and so I had to go and get a, a, a train ticket to mm -hmm. take the train to, the, to Albuquerque, and I often chuckled about that because, you know, we saw all these trains in the Wild West movies, and that's exactly the kind of a a train I rode in oh dear. Going, going to New Mexico. <laughs> <laughs> so that was my one big experience here. Mm -hmm. How long did you and your husband stay in New Mexico? Uh, I think we were there a couple of years. Uh huh. And, and what was your overall impression? Oh, well, I enjoyed it because I had got a chance. I had worked for the New England Telephone Company here in mm -hmm. Natick, and I got a transfer to Albuquerque. Mm -hmm. So I walk to uh, work each day, so mm -hmm. that was fine. But you understand that George had to live at Los Olmos, which was 100 miles away, so he would thumb his ride every weekend to come and see me. Uh -huh. Buffy, um, and that's what we had that mm -hmm. uh, little place in, in Albuquerque to live in, and that was an experience. It was, a, you know, like one room in a bathroom in a in a little kitchen in the, with a pull-down bread. If you can just hold that for the camera. That was a pull. That was the back of that house. No, that was the front. We that lived in the, the back. You lived in the back. And the landlady lived here. Uh-huh. And, and uh, I had to do my laundry in the bathtub, so she would string lines between the two buildings uh -huh. so that I could dry them. And, of course, uh -huh. that had a little charge also because the poor woman was caught in the in the rent freeze so that uh, I think we paid $12 a week to live uh -huh. there. Yeah. And that was pretty good when you think mm. we got water and electricity and everything. And laundry lines. <laughs> so that then, she, well, she asked for a little extra money to tr string those lines. But I that guess. was an experience. It was nice. There was another young couple that lived in the front part of the house. Oh, wow. A couple of years before, uh, again, during the war, you at nurses training. Yes. And you can show that in front of the camera to point out which one you are. 
I'm and, right there. And that was at Leonard Morris Hospital? Yes. And that was we, nurse? We did our training at the Leonard Morris. Mm -hmm. Now, why did you take nurses' aid training? The kind? Why did you take nurses' aid training? Oh, well, this is extra. Uh huh. Oh, I, I had my regular employment. This was mm -hmm. all done uh, when you weren't working at your regular job. Mm -hmm. we, d we took our training at night. This was to help out in the hospitals. Uh huh. They are short of help. Mm. Now, what, uh, what were your duties when you were a nurse's aide? Uh, when I began, we did everything. We helped clean patients in, mm -hmm. in their beds and, and uh, did any errands that were needed and took temperatures. But in the last, oh, good portion of the time that I was there, I worked in the maternity wards. But you know, it wasn't like today's maternity wards. Mm -hmm. We had to carry all the, the pans for washing and the pans for bed pans and uh -huh. <laughs> everything. Yeah, not like today. <laughs> no, not like today. But it was uh, helping out. Mm -hmm. And I understand you worked at Cushing Hospital. Yes. And that was m the, maternity. Uh, the, uh, the same thing, but uh -huh. uh, the boys, of course, they were all the soldiers that were mm -hmm. home recuperating. And yeah. They, that was a much different atmosphere. And that, and they mostly let us do temperatures and take mm -hmm. information and I don't, and, and feed. I, I think back of my feeding this big, big, big mm -hmm. um, fellow and I was thinking, here I am. And, and I was, of course, nervous mm -hmm. and feeding him with small spoonfuls. And I imagine he could have <laughs> asked me for a lot more at mm -hmm. a time. But Any other memories of uh, being a nurse's aide in Cushing or training at Leonard Morris? Not any particular. It was just regular hospital routine and taking care of mm -hmm. patients. It was nice to be able to help out. Mm -hmm. Let's uh, jump a little bit more to the end of the war. Do you remember the day when Roosevelt died? No. How about when the... I mean, I, I remember mm -hmm. that it occurred and I remember hearing it, but mm -hmm. when you talk about any particular thing, uh -huh. no. Knowing what your husband had done in Los Alamos, how about when the A-bomb was dropped on Japan? It was quite a thing to mm -hmm. happen. and I'm, a terrible thing to have to have happen. Mm -hmm. But if, if as the news said, that it shortened the war and did save lives, but of course, they still live with the after effects. Mm -hmm. So you, uh, when did you move back to this part of the country? We came back, and of course, we bought the house that my father, and in the meantime. Uh, Gone about That's time okay. periods, but uh, we moved. We moved back to East Natick mm -hmm. because my mother and father had given us their first home, that, that same home that they left to go to Wellesley. Uh huh. So the parents are in Wellesley, and you're in East Natick. Yes. And you're back in East Natick at a very interesting time period. Yes. Now you were um, you were married, of course, and were you also parents by this point? Yes, and and that of course confined what I was going because I never had a car of my own, so that uh -huh. there was no way to get around so much. And mm -hmm. uh, having the the child is what I missed. I'd been at um, Verna. I, mm -hmm. I'm going to call him Deb because yeah. that's what, mm -hmm. uh, Verna's wedding I didn't get to go to uh, because I was home with Lyon. Mm -hmm. And the only babysitter at the time would have been my mother. And mm -hmm. <laughs> she was at the wedding. Ah. Mm -hmm. My, so, my mm -hmm. um, aunt had wanted me to go down to when Dot and Ralph were married, but mm -hmm. I couldn't get time off from Aww. work. Mm -hmm. She wanted somebody from the family to be there. Mm -hmm. So you were in, like I said, you were East Natick and things are about to happen. Yes. <laughs> uh, I, I remember, I know that part of East Natick was, it used to be like, sea, like beachside cottages or something like that? Uh, they had started as like uh, vacation cottages right. when mm -hmm. they first began. Because uh, my father, and, and I don't know all the, uh, 
-hmm. ins and outs about it, but he, he owned a portion of that whole area and then mm -hmm. he would sell off the lots and that's how he kept going and he was able to buy into the business that he was working with and that's had mm -hmm. his own business. Okay. Do you remember when Lilja School was first dedicated? And no, when I was there. <laughs> but it's one of those things that I just don't have any pinpoint of the date. Okay. I think it was In fact, my mother, my mother and I were both there. Yeah. I think it was around 1949, 1950. Do you remember what was there before there was a Lilja School? I don't remember any things. I, mm -hmm. I thought it was just plain because mm -hmm. we used to go to that area to, to swim at Boss's Pond. Uh -huh. And uh, I don't remember think anything being on that corner. Mm -hmm. And of course, the, the whole school now is quite different. Oh, definitely different. <laughs> now you have the MathWorks field, and you have Sargent field, and you, <laughs> you still have the, uh, the gravel and pit area. Yeah. But uh, yeah, it's changed. Yes, and it's too bad my little East Natick school mm -hmm. didn't last. Well, the, I know the 1924 part was demolished, but right now, as of uh, June 2012, that portion which remains is the temporary senior center. But back to you. Route 9 gets ex expanded, uh, thing, things are changing. Uh, tell us a little bit about what was happening around that, uh, around that time period, if you could. Well, I don't know what I could tell you because uh, all I can remember is being home <laughs> with the youngster. So uh, you had you ended up with three three, three sons, three boys, mm -hmm. and they were all born at the Ned Moss. Uh huh. And did you stay in East Natick all that time? No, we. Uh, that's what I had started to say to you okay. before that uh, we bought the house in Wellesley mm -hmm. from the mother and father, and. Uh, my father converted his paint shop into a little house for mm -hmm. my mother and father, and, and so we bought their house in Wellesley. Ah. So it was just across the turnpike. In mm -hmm. fact, our lot line was the Natick Wellesley lot line. Oh, wow. <laughs> we didn't get very far. Uh -huh. <laughs> it was just that the house was larger. Mm -hmm. And so you, you basically went but, to Wellesley schools and stuff? Or oh, my boys did. did. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But uh, Natick was still home. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, and and uh, we still went to church in Natick, so. Uh, what, what church? Christ Ch Lutheran. Christ Lutheran? Okay. And that was when it was on Wilson yes, Street. Yes. Yes, they built after we, uh, I think they did it after we went, well, see, we, we moved to New Jersey. Uh-huh. And uh, I think it was at that time that they built okay. the church on yeah. Union Street. Yeah, Christ Lutheran was built in 1970, so you were down in New Jersey yes. by that time. What was down in New Jersey? Well, my, my husband, um, in the, in, my husband wasn't home during the weeks. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that was another reason that, that kept me home, because uh, he worked in Fall River, but he drove back and forth every weekend. So he, he set up an extrusion, uh, mm -hmm. uh, no, a, a window factory, uh, mm -hmm. aluminum window yeah. factory. He set mm -hmm. up one in Fall River. And then he was transferred to an, the same company to make an extrusion mill mm -hmm. in New Jersey. So we lived in New Jersey for three years. What part of New Jersey? Wyckoff, mm -hmm. a small town. It was very, very nice. Oh, good. By this time, of course, your sons were in the Vietnam War. At least they served. Uh, after that. After that? Yeah. Okay. And you were telling me at the beginning of the interview that, um, let's see. The oldest two were in, in Vietnam. Mm -hmm. They both en enlisted. Uh, mm -hmm. My oldest son is in, was in the Army, mm -hmm. and he was... Uh, in the Army Engineers. Mm -hmm. He was, had the rank of sergeant, and he was saying that uh, when he first went over there that they landed on the field and it was being bombed, and he says he was very, very scared. Can't say I blame him. And uh, then Stanley, of course, as mm -hmm. I always tell everybody, 
my oldest was on the ground and my other son was on the air mm -hmm. because he was in the Air Force. Mm -hmm. But he was in 10 years at, in uh, SAC. And then whatever he did, and I suppose his buddies, they were awarded the Air Medal for mm -hmm. whatever. And you know, they don't usually tell you much of anything. Yeah. Well, being the mother of two people who are serving overseas, did they contact you regularly? Did they write to you? Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. They were very good. Very good. In fact, one of the requests from Vietnam, my son would have liked to, a loaf of white bread. So I, we froze a loaf of white with other things. We froze a, lo a loaf of white bread and, and mailed it over. I never did hear if it remained, came intact. But, <laughs> but that was the one thing he mm -hmm. did want. Yeah. He talked about the, the children. It, apparently, they, he was being an engineer. They made a lot of roads. Uh -huh. And uh, he talked about the little ch children running after the trucks all the time. Mm -hmm. and, you know, they, I suppose, worried about getting caught in the wheels or whatever, how yeah. big the vehicles were. Mm -hmm. And they were running after the trucks to yes. get... Yes, and then begging. Mm -hmm. Right. And was um, your son in the Air Force, did he have some, any similar experiences? or? Uh, I heard n no experiences. Okay. Now there was, um, let's get back to the Lilders for a moment. There was the youngest. Yes, which was Robert. Robert. He was in the Korean, and mm -hmm. there are, he was a Marine also, and he was in the Korean uh -huh. conflict. And did he ever say anything about uh, his, his experiences? No, because we, he, he was never back in Natick again. Because mm -hmm. by that time my aunt was living in Florida. Mm -hmm. uh, she and her husband. Mm -hmm. And, uh, Did any of the surviving Lilja brothers uh, say anything about their wartime experiences? No. 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 And my husband, even worse, because they were in s such severe uh, penalties and, and, and brainwashed about security mm -hmm. that when my granddaughter, you know, in junior high area, I think that's about the year that they mm -hmm. want to, grandparents to tell them. Right. My husband wouldn't say anything, and my son and his wife and, and were very upset with my husband. Mm -hmm. And I said, they just don't do it. They, they lived through that secure mm -hmm. time mm -hmm. and live under that threat of security. Mm -hmm. so, How about any of his brothers? Uh, any, any experiences no, that they, they related? No? I imagine Walter must have given you some information, <laughs> I hope, because they, don't, they never talked very much about their experiences. Mm -hmm. Okay. So when did you get back to uh, Massachusetts? I think it was, uh, well, my son was born in 46. must have been 46. Uh-huh. I meant from New Jersey to Massachusetts. Oh, from that. Uh, well, let's see, my, my, I have to go by my oldest son. My oldest okay. son finished, mm -hmm. I stayed with my mother and finished in, in mm -hmm. Wells uh, when she was living in Natick. Mm -hmm. And then uh, my next son went into the fourth grade. So, he, and he, um, he would have gone into what, junior high? Four, mm, five, school, six. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, Thank you, right. thank you for me. <laughs> well, we mentioned that you were in New Jersey when Christ Lutheran was being built on yes. Union Street. So uh, let me put it that way. Were you back in uh, this area later in the 1970s? Yes, okay. must, must have been. Did you go back to East Natick or did you settle elsewhere? No, we weren't. Uh, Oh, no, I'm getting mixed up. That's okay. Take your time. No, we went from New Jersey to New Hampshire. Okay, New Hampshire. New there Hampshire. we go. George went into the Sanders, which was Army, it was, which was government work mm -hmm. in Nashua, New Hampshire. Government work. They're still doing government work, but it's mm -hmm. not Sanders anymore. Now it's B 
DEA or something. Mm -hmm. DEA, I think it, they call it. Uh, did he retire eventually? Eventually. Yes. Uh, well, he retired at 62, which was not a good idea. <laughs> well, you know, I think he uh, had trouble with uh, gen degenerative uh, slowdown of the brain, I, mm -hmm. whatever you want to call it. Like dementia? Yeah, yeah. Uh, a little bit, and, and it, but it was slow moving. Mm -hmm. So it, it, 10 years to really be predominant. Mm -hmm. But it was too bad because then he lost all incentive to do anything. He had set up a nice workshop and had all his machinery. That, that's mm -hmm. what we spent doing after he was 62, was buying all this machinery that he was going to work at. Mm -hmm. It never really did? No. What happened to the machinery? Uh, it stayed right in the barn, and uh, mm -hmm. we had a huge barn. Mm -hmm. um, and my son, when, after my husband died, he sold off everything but the big machinery, and that was left there to help, because an, another church mm -hmm. bought my property, and uh, mm -hmm. they thought they could make use of it. Mm -hmm. So what are you doing these days besides being a grandma? Well, I volunteer at the local hospital mm -hmm. and um, they, we also have a transitional housing for the homeless over in Hudson that's uh, sponsored by uh -huh. all the churches and I volunteer there. We hold a similar program here called Family Promise Metro West. <laughs> um, in the interview, uh, I meant to mention that um, the one thing that uh, after I, I saw the notice and heard the notice about my cousin Berna mm -hmm. losing his leg and knew all the hospital requirements, mm -hmm. um, I immediately started donating blood, which I have done until I couldn't anymore. Mm -hmm. But I also worked 20 odd years for the, the, the uh, American Red Cross blood mm -hmm. drawing program. Right. And so I donated. Uh, George's V-mail uh, that he sent me uh, to their exhibit that they had at the mm -hmm. Nashua, New Hampshire chapter house. Mm -hmm. Let's get back to Werner for a moment. Uh, of course, he was in the Marines, yes. World War II. How did he lose his leg? At that same uh, uh, battle that uh, Ralph lost his leg. Oh, wow. That was at, at um, begins with an S. Now, this is where... The Solomons? No, no, no. no. The battle. Well, I remember that, that was that, because George, uh, George lost his life as a total loo. Mm -hmm. And see that? that? That's the one thing that happens when you get a little older. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Begins with an S. It was mm -hmm. the battle, and that's where Beb lost his leg. Uh-huh. And uh, how, by the way, how do you spell that nickname? His oh, Beb? It's nickname, yeah. B-E-B. B-E-V, -E okay. In other words, short for baby. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's what it was. It was supposed to be, he was the baby of the family, and that yeah. was supposed to be the baby uh -huh. of the family forever, mm -hmm. but. Let's go um, a little forward now to, back to the summer of 2011, when the school was rededicated to honor all four brothers. Uh, tell us uh, what you thought about that. Oh, I thought it was a wonderful mm -hmm. event, and I was so, so glad to be there. My son took me there, mm -hmm. and I met you there also. <laughs> of course. But I, I'm so happy that, mm -hmm. uh, that, uh, that it was done that way, mm -hmm. and it was a very, very uh, nice ceremony. Mm -hmm. okay. Effie, anything else before we conclude this interview? No, I'm... Hmm. Well, Effie Hall, we're so glad that you could come down and contribute your experiences on the home front, on the loges, on the halls, on post-war, on everything uh, for the Natick Veterans Oral History Project. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you again.